Good afternoon. It is such a welcome moment to once again come together in celebration of the life and legacy of one of our most accomplished, revered, and in many ways legendary alumni, the late Dr. Ronald E. McNair. Today marks the 36th anniversary of the space shuttle tragedy that took him from us far too soon. But it's become so much more than that as the years have come and passed. Truly the institutions, schools, programs, and scholarships, the various name continue to grow. And in so doing, they expand the tremendous impact of a life so wonderfully lived. On behalf of North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University, its students, faculty, staff, and alumni, I welcome both those of you who have been part of our celebrations before, as well as those who are joining us today for the first time. Welcome to you all. This event is always such a significant one for our university. It's particularly so for me. Ron and I were contemporaries as undergraduates here, with birthdays exactly one year and one day apart. I was privileged to witness his brilliance and his work ethic as a fellow student. He was a great mentor to me and so many others. Later, I was absolutely awed to watch as the trajectory of his life took him from significant, incredible achievements here in Greensboro to national recognition and success as a celebrated leader in what we now refer to as STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Were he with us today, Ron McNair would be absolutely delighted with the theme of this year's celebration, Breaking Barriers, a celebration of STEM. If there is a descriptive term that better captures the impact of his life, I don't know what it would be. Breaking barriers for their own sake can be a good thing or a bad thing. It was the motivation behind Ron's barrier, breaking success, that made it so important. The commitment to learning and excelling at the highest levels mentally and spiritually. The determination to live that commitment daily with obstacles only seen as temporary challenges to be overcome. With that as his mindset, Ron packed vast amounts of intellectual energy and imagination into every day of his brief 35 years. He described his life's work in a particularly memorable way, and I quote, whether or not you reach your goals in life depends entirely on how well you prepare for them and how badly you want them. What a remarkable life, what a remarkable man. I want to thank several special guests who are with us today in this virtual celebration. First, members of the McNair family who knew him as a husband, father, a brother, and a cousin. Greensboro Mayor Nancy Vaughn, an NT alumni in numerous locations who are now working for NASA in exciting positions of innovation and leadership. Your presence makes today more meaningful for us all, reminding us of the abiding importance of Ron's life and work and the uniqueness of a man whose image continues to grow brighter with each passing year. May it shine for many, many generations to come. Thank you. Hi, I'm Greensboro Mayor Nancy Vaughn, and it is my honor to read this resolution setting aside January 28th, 1998, and each year thereafter in honor of Dr. Ronald E. McNair. Whereas in 1984, Dr. Ronald E. McNair, a graduate student of North Carolina A&T State University, became the second African-American astronaut in the history of the United States space program. Whereas Dr. McNair's accomplishments have brought distinction and recognition to North Carolina A&T State University, the city of Greensboro, and the state of North Carolina. Whereas on January 28, 1986, Dr. Ronald E. McNair was aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger when it exploded and seven astronauts lost their lives. Whereas in memory of Dr. McNair's determination and perseverance, North Carolina A&T State University has recognized Dr. McNair on January 28, 1998, on the 12th anniversary of his passing and this tragic accident. Whereas the citizens of Greensboro have many reasons to be proud 
of the historic accomplishments of Dr. McNair and of his inspiration to the people and especially to the students of our community. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Greensboro that the date of January 28, 1998 and the same date each year thereafter is hereby set aside as a day of special recognition in honor of the life's accomplishments of a true American hero, Dr. Ronald E. McNair, adopted this 17th day of February, 1998. And thank you for joining us today for the 36th annual commemorative memorial for Dr. Ronald E. McNair. As we take the time today to honor the legacy of Dr. McNair, we have asked both current and former students from North Carolina A&T State University and McNair scholars from across the country to share their stories of STEM successes and reflect on how Dr. McNair has inspired their academic studies and career choices. We are honored to know that Dr. McNair's work here at a and and beyond has inspired and touched so many. Thank you for joining us today and enjoy the commemorative celebration. I am Cheryl McNair, widow of Dr. Ronald McNair. And I would like to thank North Carolina a and State University for inviting me to participate in this 36th annual recognition of the day of my late husband, Dr. Ronald McNair and his legacy of inspiration and encouragement. I feel at this time with COVID virus continuing to spread and our voter rights continuing to be suppressed that Ron would deliver a message of encouragement, a message for you not to be discouraged, a message that this is not the time to be lax, but the time to be extra vigilant, the time to work even harder and with more determination to reach your goals. This is the time to work extra hard for your success your success and the success of the future, of the future of our youth. And with that, I wish you the best. I wish you success and I wish you to have a wonderful life. Please continue to enjoy this program and have a great day. It was fall 1967 when a Lake City, South Carolina native named Ronald Burma McNair began his first year at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University in Greensboro, North Carolina. He came to North Carolina a and as a physics major in the Department of Engineering. At first, McNair was intimidated and he switched his major to music. Fortunately, a university counselor pulled him out of the music class and convinced him that he could accomplish a degree in physics. He would still become well known for his musical abilities. In his freshman year, he made the honor list at A&T, and this was just the beginning of many of his accomplishments as a student. An outstanding scholar and athlete, McNair was featured in the A&T Register, the campus student newspaper, a dozen times during his undergraduate years. In the summer of 1969, before starting his junior year, he was one of five physics majors to intern at Duke University's physics department, working alongside professors and graduate students. In the fall of 1969, he joined the Mu Psi chapter of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. In 1970, McNair was selected to study physics at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, in a study program with North Carolina a and By his senior year, McNair was the head instructor and brown belt for the a and Karate Dojo Club. As he once told the a and Register in March 1971, karate involves the whole body from breath to muscle to mind. In the U.S. Karate Tournament held that year in Asheville, North Carolina, the a and Club took home six trophies. This was just one of the club's many victories under his leadership. 
Ron McNair graduated from North Carolina A&T in 1971, magnum cum laude. As a student, McNair had already contributed so much to Aggieland and would continue to do so for the rest of his life. Hi, my name is Colby Henry, and I am a junior industrial and systems engineering student here at a and expecting to graduate in 2023, and I am from Hillhead Island, South Carolina. Um, I chose engineering because for as long as I can remember, I've always been super intrigued by the way in which things work and the technicality of that. Um, and so while I was messing up my parents' house, taking apart things, um, they saw that in me and decided to put me in a bunch of different camps. And so that's where I kind of found engineering and then more specifically later on found industrial and systems, which fit me pretty well. Um, I chose a and or I guess a and also chose me um, because I think for a lot of my experiences, I had been in predominantly white institutions. And so I really wanted to have an experience um, to sit in a classroom and my peers look like me and to just get to have the all around experience of attending an HBCU. And so of course, a and was number one on the list for that. And regardless of it being an HBCU, it's also an amazing school for engineering. And so I was super excited to be accepted into a and to attend. Dr. McNair did so much for the black community, but also a lot for the STEM field. Um, with all his achievements, his legacy is certainly a tough act to follow, um, but I'm so thankful to be able to have someone like him to look up to. And I am, I'm up for the challenge. Um, I think Dr. McNair um, really strove to be an impactful leader. And he showed that with his work ethic and his goals that were able to improve an entire society. And I feel like that's not something that's typically achieved. And so I'm, I'm definitely going to just try to continue that legacy and work hard to make um, an impactful change in this world. Hello, I'm Charles Cooper III. I'm a senior mechanical engineering student with a concentration in aerospace from Apopka, Florida, and I will be graduating in May. So I chose uh, engineering because as a child, I love to build things and be hands-on with math and science. And when I was in high school, I was actually in a engineering management program where I was dual enrolled with Embry-Riddle. So I got that aerospace feel as well in, during that program. And I chose a and because it was the number one public HBCU for engineering. And they also had aerospace option, which fit perfectly with what I was going for. I've had three previous internships uh, throughout my college career. I did two rotations at GE Aviation, one as a quality manufacturing engineer and another as a technical intern. And then my last internship was with Apple where I was a Mac product design engineer. And some key takeaways from those internships were to be adaptable um, and always be open to learning and also networking, which is a really big thing because it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. So I plan on continuing that legacy of McNair's passion for STEM by continuing to influence people to get people to, into the aerospace field and to join AIAA as well, uh, which is the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronomics, where I'm the president here at this local chapter at a and And then just as well as continuing um, in my own field, in my own career, where I'll be continuing on as a manufacturing engineer when I graduate at Northrop Grumman. Hi, my name is Joshua White. I'm a senior physics major attending North Carolina a and State University. I plan on graduating in May 2022. I grew up in Greensboro, so a has always been in my backyard. I chose physics because I always was interested in the mechanisms behind everything moving around me. And Socrates once said that the unexamined life is a life not worth living. And I truly take that to heart. I chose North Carolina a and because I want to be around people that look like me and people that shared the same aspirations as well which is bettering yourself every single day, because that's what Aggies do. Dr. Ron McNair taught me that I shouldn't be afraid to pursue majors like physics. I shouldn't be afraid of STEM in general, that I can go to places like NASA and Cornell and perform like I know I can. And I will continue Dr. Ronald McNair's legacy by teaching young kids in our communities STEM and showing them that they can pursue their passions and end up in places like NASA, that they can become astronauts, that they can follow their dreams and their passions as well. That is Dr. Ronald McNair's legacy to me. And that has been his influence on my career and my college career as well. In 1976, McNair earned a PhD in laser physics and graduated with honors from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. 
he became a nationally recognized expert for his work in the field of laser physics. Greetings. My name is Victoria Joy Ravel. I am a McNair Scholar and a summa cum laude graduate of the illustrious North Carolina A&T State University, located in Greensboro, North Carolina. Additionally, I am a proud graduate of Morehouse School of Medicine's Master of Public Health program located in Atlanta, Georgia. I have also completed the Satcher Health Leadership Institute's Community Health Leadership Program, where I was fortunate to receive training from our nation's 16th U.S. Surgeon General, Dr. David Satcher. As a McNair Scholar, my aspirations are to continue being an accomplished public health practitioner. My work in this field has been recognized by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the American Public Health Association, and the Society for Public Health Education. Dr. McNair's work inspired me to study public health. I believe that at all times, and yes, even in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, health equity, the social determinants of health and the political determinants of health are key components in the elimination of health disparities. In addition to being an accomplished practitioner, the impact that I shall leave on this field involves my sickle cell research, my publications, serving as a co-author to national policy statements, opening doors for young people, and ultimately making this world a better place. As a recipient of a 2019 Morehouse School of Medicine Top 10 Under 40 Alumni Award and the 2020 North Carolina a and State University Alumni Association Julia S. Brooks Achievement Award, I say thank you, Dr. Ronald E. McNair. Hello. My name is Maya Butler Craig, and I'm a McNair Scholar from Ember Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida. I currently hold a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering with a concentration in astronautics and a minor in computational mathematics. My current aspirations as a McNair Scholar are to finish my PhD in aerospace engineering and then apply to the astronaut program and contribute to deep space exploration. Dr. McNair's work inspires me because he was essentially exactly everything I'm aiming to be. He had his PhD, he was a physicist, an astronaut, and the impact he has left on this world is undeniable. And the impact I intend to leave in my field of aerospace engineering is one of inclusivity, equality, and ethics. Because my goal has always been about evolving humanity. How do we evolve humanity through space exploration? How do we improve as a species? And so I think in order to do that, those three pillars are paramount to doing it the right way. Hello, my name is Dr. Gabriela Fernandez, and I am a McNair Scholar from San Diego State University in San Diego, California. I hold a PhD in Urban Planning, Design, and Policy from the Department of Architecture and Urban Studies at the Politecnico di Milano in Milan, Italy. My aspirations as a McNair Scholar is to show people that it only takes one person to change your life, one person to believe in you, and that person is you. And if you believe in yourself, you can succeed and excel in anything, anything that you can imagine. All you have to do is keep moving forward and surrounding yourself with people that also believe in you. Being a McNair Scholar allowed me to learn my highest potential, to reach to a place unimaginable. Coming from a small town in Yuma, Arizona, never did I think I would become a PhD doctor or ever move to Milan, Italy to pursue a PhD in Milan, Italy while having to learn a whole new language at the same time. Dr. McNair received a PhD in physics from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and was the second African-American to reach space. His work inspired me that even in the most challenging of times, anything is possible. And if you persevere and believe in yourself, the sky is the limit as Dr. McNair showed us. 
I had the opportunity to meet Carl and Ronald McNair's family members at MIT during my PhD visiting stay in the Department of Architecture. Seeing Dr. Ronald McNair's name written in a building at MIT with the picture of his PhD thesis cover, with pictures of his space exploration days was surreal and really made me feel closer. A scholar that demonstrated consistency, dedication, and perseverance. As a first-generation woman and Mexican-American minority myself, I know what it's like to feel the difficulties and pressure of society. Representation, diversity, and inclusion is important not only in academia, but in all sectors across fields. I'm currently a professor at San Diego State University in the Department of Geography. And I can say that McNair uh, Scholars Program has definitely influenced um, and left um, something within me. Um, I am now the director of the Metabolism of Cities Living Lab, where we work closely with vulnerable populations such as elderly people with disabilities, LGBT community, ethnic my communities, and minorities to share their stories while spreading knowledge, while localizing the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in Southern California, as well as the US-Mexico border. As a professor, it is my duty to train the next generation of students to develop projects that consider vulnerable communities. I would like to end my speech by saying a, a quote written by Henry David Thoreau. I took a walk in the woods and came out taller than the trees. Thank you, Dr. Ronald McNair for giving me the opportunity to reach my dreams. Hi everyone, my name is Maya Reed. I am a fall 2021 graduate of the North Carolina a and State University. And I hold a degree in engineering physics with a minor in applied mathematics. And as the physics graduate, my aspirations are simple. I just wanna follow in the footsteps of Dr. McNair, continue to grow within the aerospace industry. I currently work as a systems integration engineer with the Boeing company. So I'm getting my feet wet and I'm hoping to make half the impact that Dr. McNair made on STEM students such as myself. Hello, I'm Second Lieutenant David Vermillion, United States Space Force. I graduated from the illustrious North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University in May 2020 with a bachelor's degree in physics from the same department Dr. McNair went through for his undergrad. As a kid, I discovered an interest in space, reading first the Tom Sawyer Jr. science fiction series and then a library book explaining how space exploration works. Star Trek was another significant influence for me. As I was preparing for college, I knew that I wanted to study something that would excite me while also improving my odds of receiving an Air Force ROTC scholarship. Considering my Star Trek interests, I decided that physics was the right major for me. My capstone project was examining Dr. Miguel Cubierre's warp drive metric. I chose a and because it was close to where I grew up. The Air Force ROTC detachment was and still is based there. And I also liked the idea that my department had produced an astronaut, Dr. McNair. As a student, Dr. McNair inspired me because I saw reminders about his accomplishments all around campus, and I performed color guard for a few McNair Day celebrations. As a Space Force officer, I intend to protect Earth's orbital space as the launch pad for humanity to do two things. Number one, promote fair access to space so non-military organizations can launch peaceful exploration missions. And number two, develop space for more economic and scientific opportunities. As humanity continues rapidly launching more objects into space, we'll need to streamline our data collection, data sharing, and decision-making processes to achieve those objectives. So I recently started calling myself the space data guy as I develop expertise and methodologies to put those ideas into practice to keep space open for all. Reflection and responsibility by Victoria Joy Revelle. There was an astronaut who soared so high, his brilliance we cannot deny. A noble man of Omega sci-fi, a musician, a black belt, and I'd say a genius, his legacy shall not die. On October 21st, 1950, God saw fit to give us a prodigy. Down in South Carolina, Ronald Irwin McNair was born. What joy, what grace indeed was born. 
Do you understand the wisdom that was contained in this pearl? Before the artist, you could say he was the ninth wonder of the world. He had a passion for knowledge, learning, and education. But this was tested even before his graduation. See, as a student, McNair went to the public library to check out two books said to be on advanced science and math. All truth, no cap. He was denied the opportunity to borrow these books. So he sat down on the library counter and refused to leave. Doesn't that remind you of four other Aggies? Reportedly, the police and McNair's parents were called. Then ultimately, he was allowed to borrow the books. But what perseverance that took to believe in himself and to follow his dream, though quite insurmountable, it might have seemed. He matriculated on to the illustrious North Carolina a and where he studied hard and also became a member of Omega Psi Phi. For manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift reign high. He earned a Bachelor of Science degree from a and and went on to earn a PhD from MIT. After being selected by NASA, for the space shuttle program, he once remarked, to go around the world 128 times at 17,500 miles per hour aboard the Rolls Royce of space flights is one experience, but to come home amidst warmth and appreciation is an experience of equal magnitude. In my opinion, I believe it's one that we all should exude. But let's not stop there. Let's also remember that as an accomplished jazz saxophonist, he was reported to be the first astronaut to play a musical instrument in space. Man, he must have been great. A son, a husband, a father, a brother, a friend. My God may his legacy never ever end. On January 28, 1986, for the final time, he and the crew left this earth, but not our heart. And so we ask ourselves, what is our part? What is our responsibility? How are we to carry on his legacy? As a proud scholar, of the Ronald E. McNair program through North Carolina a and I was inspired by his legacy. It was there I learned the value of research, science, music, and math. Once again, all true, no cap. Throughout this program, I researched, I learned, I prayed, and I cried. I saw Dr. McNair's widow, Mrs. Cheryl McNair, come back to a and year after year after year to encourage and inspire us. I listened as his line brothers reminded us that we are resilient and tough. I learned how to conduct research and to present without fear. I knew then that greatness was near. Now, as an accomplished public health practitioner and scholar, my responsibility is to multiply this legacy, to open doors for future doctors, lawyers, preachers, teachers, engineers, interns, fellows, public health practitioners, and scientists, lest we forget, and to lift as I climb, and to remember the dream to actualize excellence, no matter how hard it seems, achieving great goals and everything, living, not just existing as I deem. So now I turn to you. What is your responsibility? Will you see it through? Shall you be as courageous as Dr. McNair? 
Lift up your head, O ye gates, do not despair. Dr. Ronald E. McNair said, in order to achieve a dream, you must first have one. Thank you, Dr. McNair, for inspiring me and future generations to come. Together, we say with gratitude, good brother, well done. Brother Ronald E. McNair was a dreamer and a doer. He was a proud member of the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated and upheld the four cardinal principles of manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift. He inspired many people along his life. Before he was amongst the stars as an astronaut, he was reaching for the stars, always working hard to be the best, not just with his academic efforts, which he persevered to acquire his PhD, but he was an outstanding musician, playing his saxophone a number of times while he was in orbit. And let's not forget that he was a fifth degree black belt and, and he loved the martial arts, competing on a number of occasions. But brother, Dr. Mignair's legacy is also truly a reflection of the man he was. So when this tragic event occurred 36 years ago, it is no surprise that today he has been honored in a number of ways. And one of which is his name is on Minair Hall on the campus of North Carolina a and State University. A number of schools have been named after him, one of which is in his hometown. And let's not forget the program, the Minair Scholar Program. So you see, Dr. Minair's legacy lives on. Thank you for this opportunity to share reflections on our brother, the dreamer, the doer, brother, Dr. Ronald Minair. Thank you, Dr. McNair. Thank you, Dr. McNair. Thank you, Dr. McNair. Thank you, Dr. McNair, for everything that you've done uh, in continuing to influence people all around the world, as well as right here in North Carolina A&T. 